Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Also, over at greatdetectives.net this weekend, check out my review of the book, Mr. Monk Goes to the Firehouse. And you can get all of my reviews automatically sent to your Kindle, and you can try that service out free for two weeks. Just search for Great Detectives of Old Time Radio in the Kindle store. Today's program is brought to you by Songfinch.com. They're a great company that provides custom songs for any occasion. And they partnered with me provide my wife, Andrea, a custom-made song for her birthday. The way it worked is I went to their website, and I entered some details about our story, and indicated what genre I wanted the song to be in, what type of singer, and just a few other simple details. And they sent those to a singer-songwriter who uh, went to work on the song. I received several emails while they were in the process of making the song, which increased my anticipation, and it was done well before the uh, seven-day time frame that they quoted. And I was really, really satisfied with the result. And so was my wife when I played it for her on uh, her birthday. They're really flexible with uh, what they do in the song, and you have a space just to enter in what you would like. And I mentioned that I'd like them to work in the titles to some of her novels into the song, and they managed to do that. Once the song was done, I could download it, but it was also available as a web page so Andrea could share it on social media. But for the old-fashioned touch, they actually uh, mailed me out a card that I could present to her. It was a great experience, and I'll go ahead and play you a sample of the song so you can get a feel for what the service is like. And if you're interested in songfinch.com for a special occasion, you can try it out and get $20 off at checkout by entering the code DETECTIVES. That's the code DETECTIVES when you check out. Born a city girl, you were always country at heart. I never dreamed we'd marry in the garden near Glacier Park. Oh, you are rainbow bright, you've been lighting my life up from the start. In the airport we were nervous, you could barely look me in the eye. But the moment you warmed up, I could tell I was your guy I will be forever grateful that you brought me along for the ride I've been blessed I believe with my own daughter And that was from I Believe by John Gardner via songfinch.com. And if you're interested, check it out, songfinch.com, and use the code DETECTIVES to get $20 off. Now it's time for Dragnet. The original air date, September the 28th of 1952, and this one is The Big Brain. Dr. 
document a drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, February 18th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working a day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. It was 10.48 p.m. when I got back to the car. Unit 1, 2. Still wet out in there. Was he in? No, he's the guy who gave us a big story about carrying the lunch bucket. Always home by 9 o'clock. Yeah. There was a car while you were out. Someone locked in a car trunk. We better roll on it. Yeah. What do you figure about to inform us? Well, I don't know. This rain pulled up someplace. He's not on the street. Well, he's your boy, Joe. You ever come up with anything worthwhile? Well, he used to. It's got to be an awful wife now. He can't stay sober long enough. Always talking about joining AA, but he never seems to get around to it. Too bad. Sure and good if you give him a chance. If you want to be helped, they're the ones who can do it. Well, I'll try to catch him in the morning, huh? Getting late. I'm tired. Yeah, I could use some sleep. Hey, when we see this guy, you think he'll be able to give us anything? I don't know. Can't be, mate. He might be able to come up with something. Doesn't figure, Joe. Nice job they pulled. There's not a rumble in town on him. Well, how do you even a close identification? Well, we don't turn him soon. It's going to be out of our hands. He's something for homicide to work on. You think of this trunk thing? He might be the same one. Well, if it's then, this makes number 10 for him. The old man will clean his head off in the morning. Sure won't help his ulcer. He'll be sipping milk all day. He just graduated the soft boiled eggs. This thing will put him right back on the sippy diet. Poor old Gideon. Thieves and ulcers. He just can't win. Now, yeah, that must be it up there, Frank. Guy waving the radio car. Hell yeah. There's 1A4 just coming in, too. Yeah. Well, let's sit here. You want to get out my side? Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, Joe. Yeah, right I'm going to call. Didn't think you're going to get here. I'll show you right around here. Yes. All right, Joe, Frank. Yeah. Are you, you police officers, too? Yes, sir. My name's Friday. This is my partner, Frank Smith. Oh, uh, I do. I'm Carl Miller. I own the drugstore on the corner. I'm the one who found the car, you know. Yes, sir. If you'd uh, show us the car. Yeah, sure thing. Around this way. I'm going way back from Miss Dalton. Over to Colorado. Yeah, I'll show you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, I'll buy it. Then I got the thing. And maybe somebody might be wrong. Don't win time. Yeah, well, look, in the car, but I couldn't see anything. Yeah. Well, I figured that maybe it might be my imagination. You know, maybe something else. And I heard this voice. It sounded like it was coming from the front. I tried to get it open, but it was locked. And that's when I called you. Uh, is this it? Uh, yes, sir. Put your ear against the front. You can probably hear it. Yeah, let me see. Let's get somebody in there. Let's see if we can get this thing open, huh? Well, there's something to fly it open. Is that anything in the car, Al? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe there's something in here. I'll look. No, sir. Please don't touch the car. What? Don't touch the car, sir. Hey, Stuart, you want to look for fingerprints? Sit it all over my stuff. I'll check my drill. Sure, I should have something in there. All right, fine. Al. Yeah. Well, you got anything in your trunk? Yeah, I'll check it. Fine. Mm -hmm. All right, sir. We're police officers. We'll get you out. Same one, sir, Joe. Yeah, looks like I'm saying no more. Well, I'll just say you're locking that guy in there. Joe? Yeah. That's it, boy. The truck. You want to drive? Yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Let me help you. Come on, sorry. Nothing. 
one of the victims could describe the suspects other than to tell us they were male, white Americans, and that one of them spoke with a southern drawl. 11.17 p.m., we arrived at the hospital. The victim had been placed in treatment room number three. Dr. George Hall was treating him. Frank and I went into the room to talk to the doctor. Hi, Joe. Frank. Hi, Danny. How is he? Oh, it's all right. Suffering from shock. He's got a nasty abrasion on his right cheek. I gave him a sedative to quiet him down. He'll be okay in a few minutes. Mm-hmm. What happened to him? I have a trunk bandage again. Vicious bunch. You going to release him, Doc? Yeah, I'll be all right in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, you know his name? I want to make out his treatment card. No, he'll pass out on us before we could get him. Uh, oh, he's coming around now. Oh, you're all right now, fella. Just relax. Take it easy. Uh, here, uh, see if you can sit up here on the edge of the table. <laughs> Joe? Yeah, Doc. You want to pour a glass of water cups over there on the wall? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. I'll get you some water, sir. That's it. Uh, just sit quiet. Yell for help. Rubbed my face against the spare tire and got loose. 
Then I yelled, kicked my feet against the trunk. I just about given up when you found me. Not sure I was through. It's getting hard to breathe in there. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. No, you can't. Until you've been locked in the trunk. Nobody can imagine that. Terrible. Just terrible. Say, have you called me? That's my wife. Have you called her? No, she'll be having it. Oh, she'll be hopping mad. What time is it? It's 11.45. Almost four hours to get a pile of coffee. She'll be raising the roof. Would you call her? Tell her where I am? Yes, sir. I'll call her. Want to give me the number? Uh, Madison 34656. Uh-huh. Tell her you're calling for Henry. Explain what happened. All right, sir. Right away. <coughs> Officer. Yeah? Be sure to tell her you're a policeman. She'll believe you. Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions to have to solve this card. Sure. I hate to ask. Could I have another cup of water? I'll get it. What do you want to know? Uh, your full name. Henry J. Hildale. H-I-L-L-D-A-L-E. Uh-huh. All right. All right. See you, Mr. Waters. Thank you. I don't know why I'm so thirsty. Dust the trunk, I guess. Got my throat. Yes. Now, uh, uh, what's your address, Mr. Hildale? 920 North Lebanon Avenue. Phone number is Madison 34656. 4656. How old? 48. Be 49 this October. All uh, right, Mr. Hildale. Uh, you have a way to get home. We'll run him home, Doc. Well, what about my car? I can't take it. Well, we're going to have to process the fingerprints, so We can release it to you in the morning. You called me? Yes, sir. I just talked to her. Where's she store? Well, she was a little upset. Worried about you. But she told her, uh, about what happened? Yes, sir. Everything's all right now. That's good. Oh, uh, Mr. Hildale. Yes, Doc. Uh, you can leave now. I suggest to see your own doctor in the morning. Just check up. Oh, 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 all right. Well, thanks a lot for your trouble. Sure appreciate it. That's uh, okay. No, it's just this way. You're already down here. Oh, yeah. I'll get the button. Same story, huh, Joe? Yeah. One big trouble. What's that? We're hearing it too often. 12.18 p.m. We left George at the receiving hospital and drove Mr. Hildale back to his home. On the way, we asked him for a description, but he was only able to give us a very meager one. We did get enough information from him for our crime report. He told us he'd come in the next day to look through the mud books. We checked into the city hall, got a DR number, and filled out the crime report. We booked the adhesive tape as evidence. The information on the robberies the suspects of school that night had come into the office. There had been three of them, and among them was a service station Mr. Hildale had told us about. At 1.46 a.m., Frank and I signed out of the office and went home to get some sleep. 7.58 a.m., we talked with Captain Didion. Here's the description we got from the service station, Lieutenant. Want to look at it? Yeah, okay. Same guy. Frank? Yes, Skipper. Want to hand me that milk? Yeah. Here you are. Mm-hmm. Stomach's great and king. Kidnapping the 23rd robbery. When are you two going to get off the dime and bring those guys in? I'll oh, do whatever we can, Skipper. You know that. And it's not enough. I know you guys have been beating your heads against the wall on this thing, but the corner pocket's on my back and we've got to break it. We've contacted all our informants. We've run on every lead that's turned up. They all go to the same place. No I'm way. I'm going to achieve every excuse I can. I'm not going to try to sell them anymore. I don't think he'd buy them. You know what? The guys who are pulling these jobs are flesh and blood. They eat and sleep. Somebody in town knows them. They're not phantoms. Let's find them. These guys aren't the brainiest ones in the world. If they were, they wouldn't be getting the cars the way they do. Well, yeah, that's figures. How about the car? Find anything? I called late and Prince. They said the car was dry enough to work on. I couldn't tell if anything was. Said they called back. Mm-hmm. I've been going over their crime reports. Maybe got an idea. Yeah. The way it looks, they picked up the cars in one area, pulled the jobs in the same area. Could be that they live in that area. Makes sense. They've been working inside a 30-square block. Freaked down to Hill, 7th to Pico. We got a description on them. Talked to the desk clerks at every hotel and boarding house in the area. Robbery, did he? Yeah, he's here. See you, Joe. Thanks, Kevin. This side. What do you have, Hmm? You bet. That's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. Bergman? Yeah, we just finished the car. It's clean. Not a thing on it. Thank you.
Mr. Hildale got to the city hall, and I took him into the mudroom to look at the books. Frank got in touch with Stewart from the police printing lab. We gave him the description of the suspects and their M.O., and the fact that one of them spoke with a southern accent. We asked him to run off 500 flyers for distribution in the area that we were going to canvas. 12.15 p.m. Sorry, Sergeant. Didn't recognize any of them. Oh, that's all right, sir. I understand. Don't think his picture was there. I'd feel awful if I saw it and didn't recognize it, but I'm pretty sure you just don't have a picture of the man. Yes, sir. Well, maybe you'd like to rest a little bit before you look at any more. Yes, I can. Get a little confused looking at so many. After a while, they all begin to look alike. Yes, sir. Joe. Yeah. See you later. Sure thing. Excuse me, Mr. Hildale. Of course, sir. Guys, we want to drop off the face of the earth. Nobody's seen or heard of them. 
I never realized there were so many hotels in L.A. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Well, let's try this one. All right. Yes, something you want? We're police officers, sir. Is our ID. What's that? Police officers. Oh, oh, police. That's right, sir. Yeah, police. Well, what do you want? We'd like to know if you've got anyone here who answers these descriptions. Quite good, huh? Yes, sir. Well, it's kind of hard to say. If you had a picture of them, it might help. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have a picture. Just that description. Sure, it could be the fellows with four eights. It sure fit what it says here. Yeah, I bet it's them. I knew we should have called you fellows about. Sir? The day before yesterday, and she's a girl, you know, teams up with... She's taking care of their room. She said that she opened the closet. She saw a gun laying on the shelf. You know, right, right out in the open. Did you report that to police? Huh? What did you say? Did you report it to the police? Oh, no. No, no, I didn't. You see, I figured that, you know, real and less real. As long as it didn't cause me any trouble, I was about to cause any. And then we talked about whether we should let you know, but then uh, we decided against it. I didn't see none of you should have. What did you get tell us when you saw them last, sir? Oh, well, a couple of hours ago. They registered here? Yeah, and it's Scott and Ed Willis. They're up in room 4 Hey, Ain't there now, though, let's see. <laughs> Well, I'll be gone. She ain't there. Well, I guess we are upset. Sir, I must have given the key and didn't remember. That's room 408, she said. What did she say? I said that's room 408. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 408, 44. They're up there now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, what are you waiting for? Are they dangerous criminals? Well, we don't know, sir. Well, be careful. You know, we wouldn't want anything to happen. Yes, sir. Hi, this is Deirdre Starry of Sal Scaramouche Fencing Club in De Pere, Wisconsin. You are listening to the great detectives of old time radio and Adam Graham. Let's get back into the show. Ungald. Welcome back. There are times when it makes sense for Dragnet to explain to us why a crime is so bad or so scary. Uh, this one, I don't think that was hardly necessary. It's quite obvious why it's so problematic to be locked in the uh, trunk of a car. Though that did add a bit more of an urgency to the case. We also get to see an early establishing 
of roles in the partnership, with uh, Frank being sent to call the wife of the man who was found. And as Joe did that, I thought, yeah, he would be the one to do that. Even though we didn't hear it, I imagine it went very well. One of the great things about radio is it gives you a chance to really focus on audio in a way that you can't in any other medium. A great example of this is with uh, the captain explaining he was under pressure. We actually could hear the bicarbonate and that emphasis on, yeah, this guy is really stressed, which explains some of the almost nonsense when you think about it. Case ultimately solved because the San Francisco uh, Police Department caught their guy. Now we turn to listener comments and feedback. And I have a comment from Jason who says, Thanks to the influence from the great detectives of old time radio, I now wish I could have Jack Webb narrate my day-to-day life. Don't we all, Jason? Thanks for mentioning us. Tomorrow, more Dragnet on Video Theater. And it's a really good one. And then on Monday, join us for Night Beat. Tuesday, The Judge. And then next Saturday, it's another episode of Dragnet. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.